the Culture of Peace concept and program developed by UNESCO in the 1980s and 90s was groundbreaking. It opened up a new vision for the future. Highly diverse groups found in the Culture of Peace a platform for fruitful exchange and mutual inspiration. The Culture of Peace was defined as the values, attitudes and behaviors that reject violence and endeavors to prevent conflict by addressing the root causes with a view to solving problems through dialogue and negotiations among individuals, groups and nations. The concept encompasses not only peace as the absence of war, but focuses on the content and the conditions of peace. It was no coincidence that the culture of peace was developed by UNESCO, the ethical and intellectual body of the UN, with a mandate and a long experience in peace building through international cooperation within the fields of education, culture, science and communication. We were very happy when the UN designated the year 2000 as the International Year for a Culture of Peace, followed by the decade for a culture of peace and nonviolence for the children of the world. Imagine entering the new millennium with a strategy for moving from cultures of war and violence to cultures of peace and nonviolence. The 11 September 2001 events and the aftermath were, however, a serious setback to the agreed plan of action for a culture of peace. Fear and the fight against terror has since then dominated both the international political discourse and the use of resources. The world now spends some $1.9 trillion on the military per year, more than at any time in history. Eight days of the world's military budgets are enough to give 12 years free quality education to every child on earth. We have to move the money from military to social sector and change our priorities so that we can fight together the real and existential threats to our security, such as the climate, and environmental crisis, the nuclear danger, and the fast-growing inequalities. We have to stop looking at the others as deranged and dangerous enemies. That serves only the military-industrial complex. War is obsolete and should be criminalized. It kills and maims, destroys infrastructure and livelihoods, and sends millions of people on the run. With the blatant failures of militarized security that we are witnessing in so many places, even the big powers now would perhaps have to be more willing to listen to the needs and interests of people and give possibilities to create a culture of peace, nonviolent conflict resolution justice and human security for the sake of our survival and for the survival of the planet. Women and women's organizations were always strong supporters of the culture of peace. The UNESCO statement on women's contribution to a culture of peace underlined the intimate link between gender equality, development and peace. There can be no lasting peace without development and no sustainable peace without full equality between women and men. The Pan-African Women's Conference on the Culture of Peace in Zanzibar in 1999, organized in Australia with Gertrude Mongella, gathered some 300 women from 49 African countries. The Women's Agenda for a Culture of Peace in Africa underlines strongly the importance of demilitarization and disarmament, 
and regrets that the peace negotiations are male dominated, regardless of women's efforts and initiatives to resolve conflicts and promote peace on the continent. Women's initiatives for peace often stem from anger and frustration over political decisions that they have not been in a position to influence. Their background and experience, not least in caring functions, may have given women different perspectives, alternative visions, and methodological approaches, and distinct contributions to traditionally male-dominated and male-defined political scenes. Perhaps the world would be different, more just and peaceful with better gender balance in governance at different levels. Many men also suffer from the straight jacket of the hegemonic and now outdated masculinity, imposing on them the insistence on stereotyped expectations to be the breadwinner, the over-decisive, the forceful, the non-emotional, the aggressive. One of the strong recommendations that came out of the UNESCO Conference on Male Roles and Masculinities and Violence in the Cultural Peace Perspective, which was organized in Oslo in 1997, was to train boys and young men in nonviolence and egalitarian partnership. Peace education is at the heart of the cultural peace. Besides disarmament and demilitarization, the biggest challenge today is perhaps to help everybody, not least boys and men, to learn to tackle disagreements and conflicts in nonviolent ways and focus on cooperation and understanding instead of polarization and suspicion. We need to learn to live peacefully together. Friends, we have work to do. Allow me at the end to share with you a poem by Adela Pankhurst. I didn't raise my son to be a soldier. I brought him up to be my pride and joy. Who dares put a weapon on his shoulder to kill an other mother's darling boy? Thank you.